I see a lot of girls around me around my age who are now being drawn to studying about Devi, studying about Shakti. I don't see too many guys honestly doing mm-hmm. that. I wonder why that is. So tell me the girl perspective. We women have lot of inner Shakti which in today's time I think we've forgotten about it and we are not tapping into it. In fact the whole victim mindset that I see that we keep asking for give me this, give me that, give me this. I want women to get into a state where they take the empowering seat and that's exactly where we were you know as devi and in in fact in durga sapshati at one place devi says i am every woman i you know i am the present in every woman and that's why we had this tradition of women worship and when i say worship it doesn't mean a worship like this but you know having a genuine respect for the inner shakti of a woman so i definitely want women to connect with that inner shakti and operate from there where you say i am the one who empower this universe or this or my own universe to uh, manifest whatever i want to manifest and that's the role most women had traditionally now we are just fighting for very very small mundane things like i want a job i want money i want this i want reservation i mean all that will happen if you in connect with your inner shakti you become the one who's empowering you and that is what these texts help you connect in a way okay but what does it mean what does it mean to connect with your inner shakti and how to realize the so it see we all have the inner power if we channelize our own power we can do anything that we want to do what do you think the achievers do in their life are the achievers really uh, really very different from other average people not really they are able to channelize their energy and focus it on what they want to achieve and that's one in fact that uh, i'm taking you on a tangent but uh, kabir das has a very beautiful doha he says um uh, i forget i'm forgetting that um kabir man nirmal bhaya jaise ganga neer paache paache har phirat kahet kabir kabir he says all you have to do it clean yourself clean yourself like the waters of ganga so ganga ka uh, pani ka the, uh, the main feature was that it has, it had self cleansing properties you know it cleans itself uh, that's uh, what ganga water was known for that's why it's considered pure and it has been scientifically tested that it had the power to purify itself uh, so he kabir says just like ganga waters if you can clean your heart and mind the world will run after you uh, taking your name you know and let me give you a practical example of it let's take the biggest achievers of our times uh, let's say lata mangeshkar you know or let's say sachin tendulkar what did they do they just kept improving their own craft did they any did they do anything other than that not really they just worked hard on their craft they improved their craft to such a level that the world was running after them so the more, more you keep cleansing yourself the world will come to you it will come run after you so that's one of the ways so that's how you also channelize your inner shakti in on you focus on one thing that you are which are any things that you want to achieve and that tapping into your own energy is something that for me these texts have helped me or at least they give you show you the path to help okay you know you can even use it in your day to day corporate business life you know so for example in durga sapshati itself uh, at one place the devi takes the shape the sh- the shape to kill mahishasur by collecting energies of all the devatas she takes energy of all possible devatas weapons of all possible devatas to manifest into a form that can kill mahishasur at one place she divides herself into different shaktis to kill people like shumbh nishumbh and their um, commanders uh, so it gives you practical lessons that there are times when you need to pull in all your resources and fight with uh, an enemy and there uh, there are times then you delegate there are times when you just enable somebody to do you you don't do things yourself but you enable somebody to do that for you so there are, you can draw lessons from at every level yeah uh at least I'll, for me mm-hmm. the perspective of a guy studying more about devi and shakti is that you become less masculine in the right ways okay 
as in you maintain your masculinity but you know exactly where to draw the line because you learn the feminine aspects of life also at least that's what i have gained from it uh compassion uh endurance uh at least that's what it is for me i don't know if i agree with you uh, but the fiercest battles in our scriptures were fought by devi the most fierce battles were fought by devi and most uh, the most fierce asuras were killed by her uh, i'll tell you a very interesting uh, uh, observation from my travels you know so uh, when you travel to these old forts uh which are abandoned uh, which are lying in ruins you will typically see there is a devi temple which is still practicing it may be in a very small shape and form but it is still being practiced and all the warriors all the kshatriyas they used to worship devi before they went to the war they may have been worshiping anybody else but before going to the war they always worship devi and devi temples continue to live there very interestingly i was in kapil vastu in nepal uh, which is the place of buddha's father from where his father ruled and their fort and palace is of course there's nothing left of that there are markers saying that this is the fort and there is a temple of a devi called samay devi there where uh, elephants are offered you know you so you'll see small little elephants to big elephants being offered there what do you mean offered uh, the uh, the oh okay okay yeah not the real elephants the okay. uh, elephant murtis all right all are right. are offered there and uh, that is the only thing that continues to live even after let's say 2600 years at least that's how we date buddha so uh, so that's the spirit of devi that lives on yeah uh, i think what i meant to say was that at least this is a philosophy that i follow for my own life which is that every man has to become slightly more feminine and every woman has to become slightly more masculine mm -hmm. through the course of life uh there are masculine traits there are feminine traits you have to just be very aware of what's happening in your head and heart and try balancing out your inner world which is kind of a repeated lesson i've had through the show as well uh so for me i know i was extremely almost in a lopsided way too masculine mm. where i had to develop the sense of compassion humility uh endurance uh creativity which for me at least i look at it as feminine traits which got uh accelerated through this process of learning much more about shakti i don't know it was just an outcome that i experienced okay so i think uh whatever uh, whatever you are born as you know uh, whether it's your nationality whether it's your religion whether the place you are born in Uh, the gender you are born in i think we should respect that and uh, be true to that you know and i trying to in fact i today i feel we women uh, in last at least 20 25 years we women have actually given up lot of feminine feministic traits or uh, feminine traits we have given up and we are trying to be too masculine the way we dress up the way we uh, behave the way we trying to compete because we are trying to compete with men at a lot of level so we at the cost of that is giving up our own femininity uh, in lot of places so i uh, uh, as much as i understand at this point in time and it may change i mean my views and everything keeps changing at this point in time i think whatever you are born as that uh, you uh, you must respect that and live uh live that in the true sense if you are born as a man so think what is your responsibility as a man and are you uh, you know taking care of that compassion and all this i think is common to humanity i mean we all need to be uh, compassionate but again you know can you force yourself force yourself to be compassionate i don't think so you know it comes uh, 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 it comes naturally to most of us and i think we are working towards being non compassionate being compassionate is your natural state uh being loving being uh, you know uh, being all the things that we want the world to be they are our natural states the way we are living our lives we are actually pulling ourselves away from that new